Houston, many people talk about God, but nobody really talks about what is God like in his own self. How can we begin to approach this question, what is God like? Well, I think we can. I'm glad you used the word approach this subject. Let's approach it by way of science. Now, science uh, has given us three domains of size. Uh, the microscopic quantum mechanic, the macroscopic, which is the world we are in, and the mega uh, universe, which uh, distance is measured in uh, light years. Now, the interesting thing for this subject that we're talking about is that scientists say that you cannot describe uh, the uh, mac micro world or the mega world in language. Our language is geared to the macro world that we're in, but it will not fit the others. You have to have a special language, which is mathematics and equation to talk about that. Yes. Now, uh, with regard, if those two flanking world, one cannot described literally in language. What about God, who is greater than both of those by virtue of including those? We have to have a special, our own technical language, just like mathematics uh, and equation is needed for science, and that technical uh, language is symbolism mm. and metaphor mm. and, by extension, uh, art. Mm. And uh, that's a way of approaching them, but, and that gives the lie to literalism, mm. uh, which thinks you can describe them in ordinary language. Mm. Now, that's the approach. You ask for the approach. Yes. That's the way we approach this question. Now, having approached the question, how about the question itself? <laughs> uh, well, now, realizing that everything is metaphorical, mm -hmm and uh, symbolic and parallel parables. There is a, a phrase in, describing Jesus, in, and he spoke to them in parables mm -hmm. because this is not just literal. Like, okay, using that approach, why... Uh, we can uh, say that all of the uh, eight authentic religions that have shaped civilization, they all make a distinction uh, between uh, the uh, esoteric and the exoteric. Uh, Esoteric is the essence, the inner, uh, like the kernel of the walnut, and exoteric is the shell that protects mm. the, the uh, esoteric. Now, in religious discourse, talking about God uh, can be either the... Uh, outside uh, clothing of God, you might say, and the inner essence. 
Now, the uh, outer uh, exoteric, one uses language and metaphor, uh, God is loving, kind, and uh, all the rest, generous. And, but all of them say their phases into a stage where words uh, drop out of view, mm. and one has to just intuit uh, from the runways uh, that the uh, thoughts are uh, taking off from when it comes up, goes up, then uh, words drop off, and one it's more like seeing than like thinking. Mm. Thinking can be put into words, but the actual vision, uh, we can later describe it, but we can, uh, uh, it is not verbal. Oh. So can we distinguish between the God that we know and that that is knowable, yeah. and the God that is unknowable. And you've used the term Godhead. Right. Can we distinguish God, at least from our language, between the God that's knowable and the Godhead that is not knowable? Uh, but is, uh, we might say, visible okay. with the, yes. <laughs> uh, the Buddhist head. The eye of the soul uh, <laughs> right there. You said it very well. Some people say that we have to use negative language to describe the Godhead. We can only say what it's not. <laughs> well, that's not a bad way of saying. Uh, do you want to know what God is? Well, go through everything in the universe and say, not this, neti, 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 and then finally what's left is gone. Uh, also, uh, you've talked about uh, uh, paradoxes. Uh, I, I'm just trying to, to get a way to understand what that Godhead can be. How can we get any sense of what that vision would be? What are some ways that we can understand? Because if we can understand even a little bit, it would give us more confidence for the reality. Well, uh, now let, I'm going to fumble with this. Uh, let me let me see what one can do. One can es extrapolate. Yes. I mean. Uh, Let's put it this way, uh, that uh, we can take all of the virtues we can think of and we can carry them as far as our th words and our ideas. They're reliable pointers. They can be pointing mm. in the right direction, but they never themselves deliver <laughs> what are uh, that ultimate that they are pointing at is like. Uh, Plato has a uh, saying of uh, truth is beyond words. It has to be transmitted uh, like light from a leaping Lane. Uh, does that? Yes, yes, yes. It's a. It's important, as you've pointed out, to understand. If we want to understand God, we have to understand both parts: the knowable part, yeah, and then the at least get a sense of the unknowable part. Because if we only see, think about the knowable part, we we will we will not appreciate what the real supreme being is. There is an important, we can explain. Some people can, some people cannot. 
and it has to do with how comfortable people uh, are uh, with abstraction, uh, concrete and abstract. Mm. Uh, concrete always has form, and uh, if you do not uh, have form, then it's nothing. Uh, uh, C.S. Lewis has a wonderful example of this. He said when he is, he was young, his parents landed on him hard. Don't cry to think of God without form because God is beyond all form. And Lewis says, I tried and tried and tried to think of God without form and the closest I could come was a sea of gray tapioca. <laughs> <laughs> he was an exoteric. If there's no form, then there's nothing there. The esoterics are comfortable with abstraction, and they do find something there.